Hello everyone, this is another video in our Net Admin video series. Uh, today we're going to talk about the installation of the Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone Controller. So we have our VMware environment open here and we're going to deploy the OVF file that we downloaded from the Ruckus website. So I'm step through the wizard here, we have to accept the license agreement. I'm going to call it virtual smart zone for purposes here. And I'm going to leave it as thick provision, just my preference. For right now, we're just going to drop it into our normal default network. We're not going to power it on after deployment because there are some changes that we have to make. So as this is going through and creating the virtual smart zone controller, um, it'll take just about a minute or so for it to deploy the OVF file and uh, we'll pick back up when it's completed. Okay, our virtual smart zone controller is now deployed inside of VMware and the first thing we have to do is we have to go in here and edit the settings. So by default, the virtual smart zone controller comes with three network adapters here. We're gonna do an essentials, not a high use installation. So we only need one network adapter. So we're actually gonna remove the other two that aren't necessary that will stop the installation from going. We're also going to decrease the CPU down to two because that's all that's required. And we're going to take the RAM up to 12 because that is the minimum requirement for the Essentials controller. So now that we've made these four changes, we'll say OK. It's now completed. So now we're ready to power on the Virtual Smart Zone controller. And we're going to open up the console here so we can make sure that everything goes quickly and uh, it's going to take just a few minutes for this to actually boot up um, so I will pause and we'll come back when it's ready okay so our virtual smart gun controller has booted up and now we're ready to begin the configuration process so inside of my VMware if you look over here to the side you can see that it received an IP address of 10101010101 so we're going to open up our web browser and we're going to go to 10.10.10.101 colon 8080. So port 8080 is the port that will bring us into the setup for the virtual smart zone controller. Have to accept a security warning. And then here we go. So here's the setup wizard. Choose our language. And then here we talked about a minute ago. You have two options. You have high scale and you have essentials. So we're going to pick essentials because this is a single user installation that we're trying to go for here, not a multi tenant installation. And it takes a second to build the profile. And then I'm just going to go ahead and Assign a static IP address. And then I'm going to assign my default gateway for the AP control, the cluster, and the web management. Sign my DNS server and it says it's not required but it is definitely highly recommended that you do that set your DNS servers so we're going to apply this configuration and it's going to take just a moment for this to run through because it's actually reconfiguring the the IP address restarting the networking services and getting the and rebuilding the profile that we chose a minute ago to set this up as an essentials controller. 
So I'll pause right here and we'll come back in just a few minutes. Okay, so when it completed, it automatically redirected me to the new IP address and the new port number for the virtual smart zone controller installation wizard. And now we're back here and it's actually now going to finish up the network information since it has redirected us to the new IP address and now we have to create a cluster. So even if you have a single instance, so only a single controller, you still have to build a cluster um, and it, it just not, doesn't take very much so you can call your cluster whatever you want to. I'm just going to call my production. I'm going to call my controller. It's going to be I'll call it production virtual smart zone. I'm not going to worry about a description. I'm going to leave my NTP server to NTP.org, which is a free site for NTP that anybody can use. And I'm going to check this box here that says convert zone director APs in factory settings to virtual smart zone APs automatically. So if you have older APs, or APs that were purchased prior to the virtual smart zone controller being fully adopted. They may be set up for the zone director. If you have these access points and you want to convert them over to virtual smart zone, check this box and when they come up they will actually get converted over to this software version. Now we're building the cluster name. It's making sure that that cluster doesn't exist. Um, doing the NTP configuration. And then it will take us to our administrative password settings. So in the cluster name, um, there are some restrictions. It does that need to be upper or lower case. Um, it'll take numbers and it'll only take some special characters. Like it won't take an underscore, but it'll take a dash. All right, so now we're back at our next prompt for administrator. So here we're going to create an administrator password. And we're going to create a CLI password. All right, now it's going to give me a summary page from what my configuration is going to be. We set up our profile type as essentials. That's my cluster name. Protocol type was chosen automatically. There's my IP address, system time, and we're going to hit finish. And now it's going to actually go through and build our virtual smart zone controller. And this will take about 20 to 30 minutes. So we're going to pause here and then we'll come back when it's done and finish up the video. Okay, so our virtual smart zone controller has completed its setup. It's 100% done and now it's sending us to the new URL to actually manage the Ruckus controller. So we're going to click on it. And here we are. So our login name is admin. And the password that we configured when we were doing our installation. Now I don't want to remember. And here we are. We have our Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone Controller. We are in Essentials mode. give you a little quick overview so this is our dashboard you have your system summary your wireless network summary top APs by client count you have a summary of APs that likes to give you model numbers here client summary to break down the model of uh, the clients by their model or type and then we have a client count and a summary count so any one of these that has a, a plus sign here, you can click on the plus sign. 
and you can actually change widgets that are here as well as directly access items for the dashboard from this menu over here on the left on the monitor tab you have uh, several menu items that are that are all based around monitoring around you have an act monitor your access points your mesh view your wireless clients so on and so forth your alarms and events um, under the configuration tab this is where the majority of your configuration is going to happen this is where you're actually going to build your SSIDs you're actually going to configure your access point specific settings you're going to configure your guest access your hotspot 2.0 your AAA servers bonjour gateway policies um, any kind of your system configuration like log settings email servers all those kind of things um, your identity is your users and roles the report tab has some pre-canned reports that you can uh, extract information and on the administrator tab you have some administrative functions where you can uh, do configuration backups restart and shut down you can do upgrades um, upgrade your license or install your license which is the next step that you'll need to do is once you've purchased a license and you receive that license you'll need to log in to your Ruckus portal and you'll need to activate your license here from administration and license so now that you have your controller ready you're ready to get your access points installed configure your SSIDs and run your wireless network I uh, hope this video has been helpful and thank you very much